Today's guest is Ashok Gupta. He's an internationally renowned speaker, filmmaker, and health practitioner who has dedicated his life to supporting people through chronic illness and achieving their potential. Ashok suffered from ME or chronic fatigue syndrome around 25 years ago when he was studying at Cambridge University. Through neurological research that he conducted, he managed to get himself 100% better. He then set up a clinic to treat others and then published the well-known neuroplasticity limbic retraining recovery program and app known as the Gupta program in 2007. Absolutely brilliant. The approach that he has taken towards rewiring your processes deep in your subconscious so that you are getting different results in your everyday life. I resonate with the work he is doing completely. And I also am very grateful because he has been doing independent research on the results they are getting. So we can get this more, this type of approach more and more available to the general public, right? Because unless you're like listening to a podcast like this, or you're following holistic health and wellness professionals on social media, everyday people, they don't know stuff like this exists. So if you know someone with chronic pain, you know, any sort of chronic health issue, MS, Lyme disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, any of these things, please send this episode to them. Um, It's very, as I mentioned in the episode, it's very aligned with the way I approach my one-on-one coaching with clients with wonderful results. But what doctor, not doctor, sorry, I'm so used to Dr. Gupta's, we just had one recently. What Ashok has done here is um, made it very consistent, right? Very consistently available from the app to also he mentions they have daily group sessions available for people. So absolutely amazing. Um, We'll go ahead and jump right in. Here is Ashok Gupta. Okay, so Ashok, I'm super excited to dive in with you on this kind of outside of the box approach that you've taken with healing, right? Deep chronic issues, anywhere from, you know, IBS and chronic fatigue syndrome to mysterious, you know, chronic pain that people can't figure out. It's mostly like these chronic issues in health that people have probably spent thousands of dollars and feel like they've tried everything there is. A lot of those people, I would assume, are coming to your program and you can relate. So I was wondering if you can start with your story and what got us here. And then we'll go into a little bit more of your approach to managing chronic health issues. Well, thank you, Tara. Thank you for, first of all, inviting me to your podcast. So so super excited to be here. And uh, yeah, like many of us who are on this journey, we've had our own challenges, our own illness experiences and look to share that with others. So mine started in the mid nineties when a lot of these illnesses weren't really recognized. It was just, right. thought, oh, they're just depressed. Oh, it's in their mind. And I was studying as an undergrad at Cambridge University. And suddenly I had a virus that seemed to go away, but it left a legacy where I felt extremely exhausted and tired. I had to crawl to the bathroom sometimes. I was so exhausted. Wow. I opened up a textbook and couldn't even read the words on the page. I mean, I literally thought there was something wrong with my, my brain. And I went from doctor to doctor and they would say, we don't know what causes it. We don't know what to even name this thing. Mm-hmm. There's no treatment for it. You're on your own. There's nothing you can do. And you might have it for the rest of your life. You know, <laughs> which for a young man is like a, a, you know, it's like a death sentence. It's like, what, what on earth are they talking about? Mm-hmm. And I met hundreds of others who were suffering from it. and. You know, in my worst moments, I kind of made a contract with the universe. I said, if you can just get me, even if it's 20% better, just 50% better, oh. I will dedicate the rest of my life to helping others with this condition. Wow. And so then I managed to find out some research on brain neurology and physiology. And I put a few things together and then in ad hoc way, started retraining my brain. Mm. And I managed to get myself 100% well. And then I published a medical hypothesis online in 99, and it was published in Medical Hypotheses in 2002, and then set up a clinic to treat others. And then we had the Gupta program published in 2007. And since then, we've been conducting medical trials and randomized control studies. So yeah, that's been my long journey to this moment. Wow. You know, I think I I might be misattributing this, but I believe it was Tony Robbins who said, um, you need two things to be successful in any endeavor. 
inspiration or desperation. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're reminding me of that. I'm like, you most likely had some inspiration and desperation. If you got the double whammy, you're going to show up big to some stuff. Cause to hear you say like, if you can, if please, if you can just help me get 20% better, I'll dedicate my whole life to this. Like that's, that's a pretty low place you were coming from pretty desperate to feel even a little better. And I know so many people with chronic pain feel like that. Right. And in chronic pain is outrageously high and chronic fatigue. Right. This is one of those ones that I, I feel for people who have this because they're it's essentially saying, like, we don't know what's wrong with you. You're just exhausted and have tons of brain fog. And so we're just going to slap a name on it. And it's mm. got to feel a bit hopeless. I would assume if I got diagnosed with chronic fatigue, it's like, cool. So mm. what's the game plan here? And yeah. it's like there isn't one. There isn't one, no. I mean, I was presenting at the recent IACFS conference, the Chronic Fatigue Sy Syndrome Conference in New York uh, last year. And, you know, the leader there said, you know, it's great that we come together every year and we have this conference and all branches of medicine are represented. Yet in 30 years, we've not come up with a single biochemical remedy for this condition. Wow. wow. Nothing that mm. even shows remotely consistent results. And that made me realize that we are treating these illnesses in completely the wrong way. And modern medicine isn't designed and set up to be able to treat this. So we need a whole new branch of medicine to treat these neurological, uh, what, I, what I believe are neuroimmune conditions, essentially. So can you elaborate a little bit on that and, you know, more of what your philosophy is on how to actually treat these conditions and help? Yeah. Absolutely. I, I love to start with the biggest question of all when describing what these illnesses are and how we can treat them, which is why are we here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we can spend a lovely conversation uh, going through the spiritual uh, concepts of life. But I start with the scientific part of this, which is we are here because over millions of years of evolution, this brain, this nervous system, this body has evolved to help us survive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've started off with plant life and then you know, single cell organisms, invertebrates, vertebrates, mammals, human beings, our DNA actually contains that lineage. I mean, a fascinating thing I find is that 40% of our DNA is the same as a banana, which <laughs> is so fascinating. And so we actually have that survival, those survival traits inbuilt within us. So we're designed to survive, procreate, pass on our genes to the next generation. So our system is designed as a survival machine. Now, that's fine in the, the vast majority of human history, but recently we're not living according to our genetic inheritance. So suddenly we've gone from you know, being hunter gatherers, living in fishing villages, etc, being outdoors, in nature, movement, etc, to now living in boxes, not being exposed to daylight, sunlight, infrared rays, eating toxic food, drinking toxic water, uh, and then obviously all the pollution around us, plus then screens, social media, competitiveness, stress, all of, and not being and lack of community. So lack of community is a huge factor as well. Mm -hmm. And all of these things have made our system be in a chronic survival mode, mm -hmm. where we have this low grade inflammation, almost continuously. So what is the number one thing? If you chat to friends, people around you, what they will, what will they say? Oh, just so busy, just really exhausted, really tired, you know, and so much of the time, people are just on the edge, they're almost on the edge of a breakdown, because they're pushing their bodies so hard because the body's having to work harder against all these threats in our environment so that's the the first jigsaw puzzle is that we are built to survive and we're now living in a more threatening environment according to our bodies mm -hmm. and the third jigsaw puzzle is or piece is we then get hit by an an assault so that could be a virus bacteria mold lime something that impacts on the body and normally we fight this thing off and we go back to normal, but imagine if your body is weaker because of this constant onslaught and it's primed to be hyper defensive, suddenly a virus comes along and it thinks, oh no, this is dangerous. Yes, we're gonna fight it off, but what happens if the virus is still here once we fought it off? Let's err on the side of caution and continue with this inflammatory response. And that is the mm -hmm. basis of so many modern diseases. So Tara, I don't know if you're a, a fan of Game of Thrones by any chance? Um, no, I haven't made no. the time for TV in many years, but in many I, years. 
at least somewhat familiar from people talking about it. <laughs> right, okay. Well, let's take the example of a fairy tale then. It's the same thing. Let's imagine a fairy tale. And imagine you are Queen Tara of your kingdom. That has a nice, that has a nice ring to it, Queen Tara. There you go. So you're Queen Tara of your kingdom and you have an army, which is your nervous system, and you have a navy, which is your immune system that protects the kingdom and the castle from invaders. And let's imagine that that happens as normal, but suddenly there's a drought in the kingdom. So that suddenly means that the kingdom is weaker, there's not as much food to feed everyone, and the army and navy are weaker. Now an army comes over the hill, and your army and navy fight valiantly to defeat the enemy, and they just about manage to fight it off. It takes a lot longer than normal. And then they suspect that the army is hiding in the bushes, hiding in the forest. So they're not convinced they've completely fought it off. So they come to their weekly meeting with Queen Tara and they say, we need all the resources now because we need to defend you. We need to defend the mm -hmm. kingdom. And we need all the corn, the wheat, the water. Everything should be channeled to the army and navy because if the kingdom falls, we're all lost. So you logically think, well, of course, if you think the enemy's still there, take all the resources of the kingdom to defend us. So now that army and navy keep firing off their weapons of war, their arrows, their cannons to protect the kingdom, even at the slightest provocation. So a bit of stress and it's a man on a horse walking over the hill. Quick, fire off your arrows, fire off your cannons, which then causes that low grade inflammation in the body. We're continuously stimulated. And now some of those arrows and cannons start falling back in the kingdom, causing the inflammation, causing the autoimmune effects in the body. So our body's being affected. And now spies can proliferate in the kingdom because we've underfunded the secret service, if we can extend the analogy for a while, which means that opportunistic viruses and infections start flourishing in the body. So you can see how just from an over-defensive response to ensure survival, the whole kingdom is now in this altered state where it's weak, it's exhausted from its own overstimulation. And of course, another cycle is the, the gut. So the gut dysbiosis that then occurs. And we know that when the gut is disrupted, the brain is disrupted, the brain is disrupted, the gut is disrupted. So another feedback loop that occurs. And this becomes chronic because it started as an acute issue and then it becomes chronic. The symptoms continue and someone can have a chronic illness for years. And we believe this is the explanation for chronic pain, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, long COVID, fibromyalgia, Lyme disease, POTS, all of these mysterious diseases which we don't have treatments for, is because they're software issues, not hardware issues. The software mm -hmm. is malfunctioning, not the physical hardware. Mm -hmm. And brain retraining is when those generals come to their meeting with you, you say, my dear generals, You've done a wonderful job at keeping the kingdom safe, but now the war is over. You can stand down, go to standby mode. We are safe. And the generals won't believe that the first time or the second time or the third time. It is that repetition to create those new neural pathways to persuade the brain that we are no longer in that mm -hmm. dangerous environment. And so this is also the basis of things like you know, even anxiety and panic and depression, often it's a conditioned response to our environment that is trying to keep us safe. And if we can find the right key to the right lock, we can unlock this. You know, even Alzheimer's, MS, they are systems where the, our own immune system is overstimulated and attacking our own bodies. And so that is the, the promise of this type of approach. So I'm really excited for medicine. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I, I was saying before we started, I'm like, I, I, I'm pretty sure we're pretty aligned on our methodologies here. I'll uh, read a text for the audience just to share because it's fun. Literally right before we started this interview, I got an intuitive ping for one of my clients who's come a long way with a very similar approach to what you do. And I said, I'm getting an intuitive ping that you need to start talking to your thyroid. Right. It's been a little ongoing thing. And she's like, she, she gets this stuff. I had her read the biology of belief of Dr. Bruce Lipton and from Dr. Bruce. And she's, she's, she gets it. Right. And she's like, yeah, that's interesting timing. Cause I noticed yesterday I'm retaining some water 
And I said, allow your body's own innate intelligence to guide you. It knows what's going on and it knows what it needs. And I share that because just to say, I completely agree with you. I think that um, our own, dis- we have a very strong humanity wide disconnection from our body's own innate intelligence. And if you're willing to be a little weird and actually build a relationship with your body, it will tell you all the time what it needs. And just to further share real quick, I was just making this analogy with my son yesterday because I got a some sort of respiratory virus and I'm, I'm pretty much over it, but it's like some phlegm has been coming up and I'm like, phlegm is fascinating, right? I'm like, Our Mm. immune system is like the military. It's like coming in. It has like intelligence operations. They're like learning about the, the, the invader. So they can remember next time they're putting in all of these like operations to get it out, heating up your body with a fever phlegm. It's just like an amazing battle that's going on inside with high degrees of intelligence. And for me, someone who's practiced a lot of what you teach for very long, It's like when I know that my body's already struggling, it's like, okay, so what do you need? You need more sleep. Oh, what was that? Fish oil. Okay, cool. Um, more nutrients. Oh, you no eat no food right now. Okay, fasting. Got it. You know, and you can start to really guide your health from this place. So I really appreciate um what you're doing with people because it's to me, it's gotten to the point where I feel people can spin their wheels forever. Um, looking outside of themselves. I'm not saying we don't, there aren't answers. There are answers outside of ourselves. There's like, wow, I never thought of that. I didn't realize the, the soils are depleted and I might need some different nutrients I'm missing by doing some lab work, right? Like those are all helpful pieces of information. But when we get to a point in our health where we are disconnected from our body's own innate intelligence and constantly looking outside of ourselves, it becomes very difficult to navigate that journey for, you know, ongoing on the daily. So um, could you talk about some tools that you utilize to help people learn how to navigate their health from a place of innate body intelligence? Yeah. So we have an app, which is a complete brain retraining Program. Mm. And it's a holistic approach because this is so important that it's not just a uh, you know, piecemeal. And it's an approach where people can watch videos and listen to brain retraining exercises and understand what's going on in their brain and body. Because the, fir- the first port of call is awareness. We, we have mm-hmm. to become aware of what's going on and yep. why and, and ha- make it have m- uh, kind of logical sense. Because if we don't feel it's logical, we aren't going to believe in the treatment and then we're not going to pursue it. So exactly. that's incredibly important. So we start with that point. And then we have three R's of the program. So the first R is relaxing the nervous system. Because mm-hmm. if the nervous system is stimulated, our brains aren't as neuroplastic and as flexible. They can't learn new things. So yeah. the first part of call is lots of breathing techniques, meditation techniques, vagus nerve mm-hmm. techniques, whatever we nice. want to call them. Ultimately, they're all just calming the system so that our brains can loosen up ready for the second R, which is retraining the brain. And that's the core of what we do, which is training the brain that we are safe, that it, and we're not at the same position as we were when we first got that illness, nice. when the COVID infection first came or the, the pain first started. That's when the most intense reaction occurred. And that's when the neurological learning occurs, that we're in danger yeah. when we're creating this response. So we're detraining that response. Mm. And then the third aspect is re-engaging with joy. Mm. which is often Mm. neglected in medicine uh, this idea that for us to thrive longer term we first of all need to become aware of our stress responses so Mm. that we are able to calm those and be more aware of them and connect more to our natural inner happiness and joy Mm. and gratitude which then is able to keep our nervous system calm Uh, so that re-engaging with joy the fun the laughter the uh, those uplifting moments in life and bring building more of those into our day is incredibly mm-hmm. important. So yeah, those are the three R's of the, the program that we have throughout the app. And mm-hmm. of course there's weekly webinars and something which has really been a game changer has something called daily Gupta size, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is essentially, we know, and I'm sure you have clients like this, where you know, if you're alone, isolated, feeling down with your condition, it can be very hard to feel motivated to, engage with a lifestyle 
things we know are beneficial right. or take the medications and whatever so we have a daily session on zoom with our coaches wow and, nice. uh, one for nervous system regulation and one for brain retraining and we have mm. two to three hundred people a day coming onto those sessions mm. and that has been an absolute game changer because that regularity that motivation that community spirit has mm -hmm. been instrumental in getting people to adhere to this type of approach and of mm -hmm. course as you know meditating on your own versus 300 people in a room meditating together is a completely different experience that totally. group intention that we're all here to heal is so powerful so yeah i would love for people to join those sessions it's just incredible mm. wonderful brilliant it's like you went to cambridge and had a passionate interest or something. <laughs> um, can you tell me a little bit more? Like, do you, is it, was meditation a part of your background before all of this started? You know, how, tell me a little more about how you came to this conclusion, you know, how you got to this place. I know, I mean, I know obviously you were like, please help me, but like, was this something that you were already familiar with? And then you were like, felt intuitively to, to start taking this approach when you were sick or like, how did this, this approach, I'm curious how this approach came because obviously you and I both know that this is not like the norm, right? Like when people come to me, they think I'm going to like, just be this like really rigid, like you do this, do that, do this, like, you know, big mean mommy coach. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to just turn you back inside yourself, turn you back inside yourself, you know? So how did, how did you come to this approach? You know, it's one of those things, as you say, desperation and inspiration, <laughs> The universe guided me. It was meant to be. I can only say that in the sense that I was in a bookstore and I naturally just saw a book on the shelf, which was the instrumental book in my hypothesis that just hmm. for whatever reason spoke to me. And I reached out and I grabbed that book and then meditation. I came across a course that was about breathing and meditation. Uh, it's called the Art of Living course, which I find you know we recommend all of our patients do it. And that breathing technique was really good. And I thought, you know what, this is great. And the meditations and stuff are so important. Mm. So things just came into my life yeah. at that time that led me to understanding what was going on. Mm. And I think that, you see, meditation is something which many people who have anxious brains or these types of illnesses find very difficult. But we say that's OK. If, find what works for you. So if it's breathing techniques, if it's visualization mm. techniques, you know, massage or sitting in a hot tub, find whatever calms your nervous system and stimulates parasympathetic response. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, then your brain becomes more flexible. Mm -hmm. But of course, meditation is something that we do prescribe for people to try. And many people find that once they've healed, it's indispensable. You know, we say, mm -hmm. don't just think you've stopped the Gupta program now. There are components that are useful to continue for the rest of your life, especially the somatic work, the breath work and the meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meditation has been a part of my daily practice for probably five, six years now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm definitely wired more of that, like ADHD anxious, like go, go, go. Like, you know, that's my default. And, um, it has completely changed my reality to the point that I value parasympathetic more than sympathetic. I love to go to the gym and get in that mode acute, like for a really short little sprint, right? Really great, great for the body. But, you know, I think many people, because I love lifting and, you know, business and I have four kids, you know, I get this reflection from people often like, I know, Hey Tara, sorry, I know you're really busy. And I'm like sitting on my, my deck here, just like listening to the birds. And I'm like, I'm, I mean, yeah, I definitely have those moments, right? And it happens, but I, 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 I don't want that to be my life. Like that is like a, okay, what needs to change as quickly as possible so I don't have to be in this mode, right? I value the parasympathetic the most with little bursts of sympathetic, right? And I so totally understand that. Yeah, we mm -hmm. tell a lot of our patients that, you know, because a lot of our clients are overachievers or over rescuers mm -hmm. or indeed very conscientious and they want to do a good job or they mm -hmm. felt insecure in their lives and they're trying to fill a hole of achievement yes. by saying if i do this and do that and live this great amazing life then i'm gonna feel good about myself right and actually they become adrenaline junkies you know a lot yeah. of people and we say you know value now a different type of life so rather than valuing the roller coaster of life and the the busyness and thinking that that 
is something to be proud of, and, and it, you know, it's fine if it is, start valuing communing with nature, communing yeah. with friends, the quiet yeah. moments. And gradually people get used to that and attuned to that. And they love that feeling of mental peace. Mm-hmm. That who then wants to lose that and go back into the crazy world and- Exactly. And so it's valuing a different experience. Mm-hmm. And because society doesn't, society doesn't value relaxation and meditation. Society values busyness, business, mm-hmm. where, the, where business comes from, busyness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. it also values people who are doing a million and one things at a time and, uh, you know, being on different screens all the time. But it's recognizing the way society is going, it isn't good for our genetic inheritance no. and the people that we actually are. So mm-hmm. value the stillness. That's the real spice of life. Yeah. It's part of the reason I moved to Hawaii is because they get that here. Uh, it's it, it being busy and, you know, worldly success and all that's not valued. Social media being on, it's not valued. What's valued is pulling out some camp chairs behind your car and putting some music on and just spending time with your family and friends by the ocean. What's valued is when someone comes over, you have plenty of time to quote unquote talk story as the Hawaiians say with them, right? Having time to care and be present with others is extremely more valued in Hawaii than, you know, at least what I know on the mainland, right? It's like, they don't want that. A lot of people don't even have social media. A lot of people have flip phones here. They're like, and, and they're, they're proud of it. They say like, why would I need anything else? I got a camera. I don't need all that. Right. Because they want that. It's an intentional valuing of presence of nature. You know, people live off the land here. They, If they're going to brag, they're going to brag about the lobster that they caught and how excited they were because they sold it and got a new spear fishing, you know, a spear. <laughs> right? So it's like, it's beautiful, you know, and it's rare. And it's part of the reason I love living here. But, you know, to take most of the most of the world, you're exactly right. The, you, val- our value gets wrapped up in doing until you hit a rock bottom sometimes because your body, you just trampled over your body in that whole process, you know, and the body's really resilient until you get slammed with some virus. You've already been pushing the edge and you hit something. I wanted to come back to this. You hit something really important when you first started and it's like, what's missing, right? Resources. You said, right. This military is like, we need resources. And if you're a health enthusiast, which you probably are, if you're listening to this podcast, I mean, you know that even if you're eating really well, our soils are so depleted that we do not, our bodies are not getting the level of resources that they were designed to get, right? And so you're already coming up, most of us, a little bit low on something, right? Especially minerals, because that's the big thing that's missing in the soils. So it's like, we're already low resources. Now we have this attacker and you're also trying to do 50 million things. You're not sleeping. You're drinking coffee all day. So you can force yourself to keep going, 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 going. And eventually this amazingly resilient body can only handle so much. And Mm. Sometimes it's a beautiful low, you know, sometimes it's a, like what happened with you. Sometimes it's a body slam from the universe. That's like, wake up and pushes us into our purpose. So, um, you know, you never know, but it's, it's definitely nice, not only to avoid in general, like horrific chronic pain. It's not a fun experience. Sometimes maybe that's what we need because we're not listening before, it gets there or just something acute happens, you know, not to like shame anybody is like, dude, I, I'm trying so hard. I'm not trying to shame anybody, but you know, sometimes I'm just saying it could be purposeful in your life. But if you can get to a place where you're doing the things that you just described, all of the things that you guys are teaching, it's just your quality of life is so much higher also. Right. Um, and you, you don't realize that until you learn, see it. Right. Like, I don't want to be on screens all day. I don't want to be go. I I did that. Like I, I did personally. It's like, makes me, I'm like, no, no, I'm never going back to that life ever. That sounds horrible. It sounds like putting me in a room with like heavy metal music playing. That's what it's, <laughs> that's what it feels like when I think of the busy life. It's like, woo, way too much, way too much stimulation. Any thoughts on that before I continue? Yeah, of course. So I think you've touched on a lot of points there. And I think the way we look at it is it's a metamorphosis, the dark nights of the soul. So we start off as a caterpillar 
and we're living life at a certain level mm -hmm. and we have certain habits as a caterpillar and suddenly we're put into a cocoon the cocoon represents these big life challenges so it could be illness it could be divorce it could be losing a job or whatever it may be but let's take the example of illness it forces us into a cocoon because we can't live our normal life anymore but it lets us analyze and reflect on who the caterpillar was yeah. how do we behave how do we react to life so that we can then begin to metamorphosize to living life at a different level and it is painful being in the cocoon because you've got to sprout wings yeah. imagine the caterpillar just sprout wings physically out of its body right? you got to dissolve like all your you're just turning into guts you know <laughs> yeah. and then even struggling out of the cocoon so struggling out of illness we know, you know, the example, I'm sure you heard this story where a man goes into a forest and he sees a butterfly struggling out of the cocoon. So he thinks, oh, let me let this poor butterfly come out. So he cuts open the cocoon and says, fly, butterfly, fly. And the butterfly flaps its wings and falls straight to the ground. Because it was the struggle out of the cocoon that strengthens the wings in order to be able to fly. And in a similar way, when we give that analogy to people, it is the struggling out of your illness and understanding more about who you were and not repeating yeah. those same mistakes that enables you to fly for the rest of your life. Yeah. Because the cocoon is a course corrector. It's a spiritual course corrector. You were going on a certain trajectory as a caterpillar, but that wasn't your destiny in this lifetime. And so a course corrector came to say, actually this, look at this way of living, this way of growing and evolving spiritually. That is going to require a painful course correction but when it happens and you finally get there you'll understand why mm -hmm. and uh, when we reframe illness in that way then people find it's a lot mm -hmm. easier to let go and relax i love that i love that story and i i <laughs> I've definitely gone through some metamorphoses in my life and I, I I used to say freaking caterpillars are so lucky they get this like nice little private cocoon and no one can see them we're over here like trying to like run our kids to soccer games and work our jobs and like make dinner and we're like I'm literally dissolving every shred of who I am and going through a massive ego death and don't know what's next and I gotta just like hey everybody how's it going that's how it feels <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. um okay yeah. I was wondering Wondering if we could shift gears a little bit about, you mentioned that you've done some research and I was just wondering what you found there. Yeah, well, with all of this type of work, you know, there are so many different people saying they can do this, that, and the other. What matters to us is the scientific research to back this up mm -hmm. because we can only yeah. get this mainstream if we use that approach. So we've done quite a lot of medical studies now. Um, and so as an example, we did a study on long COVID. And we compared our program to a general wellness program that had sleep, diet, supplements, activity, etc. Nice. And after three months, it found that our program was four times more effective wow. at reducing fatigue and exhaustion and twice as effective at increasing levels of energy. Nice. So it's almost a 400 percent result, which you don't see, you know, in, no, in medicine. No. It's incredible. <laughs> so that was a published independent clinical randomized control trial. So people wow. can read that on my website. Uh, also with fibromyalgia, we found that our program reduced fibro scores by 37 percent in eight weeks compared eight to zero percent in the control group. Halved anxiety, halved depression, halved pain and wow. very low scores in the control group. So that's a published study as well. Yeah. And what's really interesting is we just published a study um, well, we didn't publish an independent study, which was a clinical audit, and that looked at 16 different conditions. And we found that after three months, we were able to reduce, we were able to increase health and functioning by quite high levels, large effect sizes across 16 different conditions. So for instance, long COVID, 84% um, increase in health and well-being. And then mm. uh, conditions like Lyme disease, 116% improvement in wellness just after three months. And we are a kind of six month uh, program. And then taking another example, mold illness, 67% improvement, long COVID, 84% improvement. So what this is the first time that we were able to take a bunch of different conditions and say, all of these conditions are like branches of a tree, but they share the same trunk and the same roots, which is, some dysfunction in the unconscious brain. And if we can correct that, we can heal a whole multitude of different diseases and illnesses. And that's so exciting and promising.
Mm, mm. I'm curious. I think I, I believe I saw on your website somewhere. I'm trying to pull it up. Like you guys have naturopaths. Like, do you correct? You have, am I, am I mistaken? Do you so have we have coaches who coaches. support the okay. brain training and oh. they're trained by us. We have 20 or 30 coaches around the world, okay. but we also have a lot of naturopaths and nutritionists who recommend our program to their patients. Oh, that might be got what you're it. Yeah. And so, so many alternative and complementary and functional integrative doctors are saying, actually, we can do a certain amount in terms of the supplements, mm. the diet, the lifestyle changes. And this brain retraining component is very important as well. So this holistic approach now, many doctors are integrating it within their overall nice. protocols because they're seeing they can get better results with their clients when they introduce this piece. And that's um, really our model for the future is let's get this integrated in a mainstream medical healthcare because there's this weight of evidence behind it. Mm -mm -mm. Good job getting those studies done. That's a no joke endeavor. <laughs> oh, yes. Tell me about it. So we've even established a 501c3 compliant fund in the US. So donors can donate to this fund and then we can fund this vital research because we want to do studies into MS, into Alzheimer's, into uh, larger scale studies on long COVID. But as you know, the medical profession aren't going to fund this. The pharmaceutical companies aren't going to you know, fund this. So we have to rely on you know, wealthy donors who can come forward and see the importance of this research, because, you know, I believe we are where mindfulness was 30 years ago. You know, no one had heard of that. It wasn't really right. mainstream. Whereas now mainstream doctors are recommending meditation and mindfulness. So if we get the research, we can make an impact on, on millions of lives. And that's really our vision. Mm. So how can, if someone's hearing this and they want to, can they go to your website or how do they go about donating? Sure, they can go to our website, guptaprogram.com forward slash donate. Okay. And there they can see the different studies that we have and um, yeah. how to contribute. So yeah, those are actively uh, places where we are looking to raise the money. Mm, okay, thank you. And then, okay, so you mentioned, you know, it's, it's six months, essentially, right? And, and I saw in some of your videos, you're, you're asking people to commit to six months, even though I watched some of your uh, video, you know, success stories, and it was so beautiful to see these people talk about like all of these, you know, painstaking, like can't figure out what's wrong with me. It's this massively like deteriorating my quality of life. And within days and weeks, you know, they're saying like, I already started feeling better, but, um, you mentioned that you like people to, you never know, right? Like you, it's, it may take longer. And plus like, it's like anything, it's like maybe doing a diet for a month, Right. And you're like, well, I lost weight, but then you just go back after the month to all your old patterns. I'm assuming that's why you shoot for at least that six month commitment. And can you talk about that? Because I mean, mm -hmm. I know, you know, and I definitely know doing training and nutrition also with people. It's like, I'm not seeing results in like a month. And I'm like, well, how is mm -hmm. it going on Friday nights? How's it going on Sunday when you're home all day? Like what's actually happening? Yeah. It takes a little while to retrain mm. your emotional responses to food and like, have you done every workout? Like how, you know, it takes a little while to pattern in new beliefs, new habits, new mindsets. And so I was wondering if you could speak on that. Yeah, I think it's a great analogy in terms of weight loss and, and the challenges <laughs> you face and keeping up good habits. So yeah, we say a six month program because some people do get better within weeks and months. Some people, it does take six months to a year to sit, really see those effects. If your brain's been trained in a certain way and it's done a certain pattern for months or years or decades, it's going to take some consistent retraining to get it out of that mindset, mm -hmm. especially when it's a survival response. I mean, I think we can retrain things which are mild, but as a hardcore survival response, you're telling your brain the opposite of the core function it has to survive. Right. Right. So that's where it takes that persistence and retraining. And I think this is our biggest challenge because we know when people are consistent through our surveys, People do the program five or six times a day, they get well, right. but it's pe getting people to adhere to the program and stay motivated and committed. But as I said, what has been the game changer is the daily Zoom sessions, because if people are, you know, they can't figure out what they've got to do, come on a Zoom call, our coaches hold your hand, they take care of you, and you can just let go and just follow the instructions. And right. that is so powerful for people. I think we're the only program probably in the world that does these daily sessions. And so I think that the, 
Um, the commitment and not becoming complacent is hugely important. So many people, they get 70, 80% better. They say, yeah, I'm doing great. And they'll just suddenly go off to the gym or suddenly push themselves way too hard. And then they have a dip. And we say, no, you've got to pace yourself slowly back into life and not become complacent and continue aspects of the program for at least six months to a year because you don't want your pathways to go back to the old ones. So the way we talk about it is imagine you have a field and there's a river going through that field. So the water is the going through that field and that's a stimulus interpretation response model. So your brain detects symptoms in your body, thinks it's dangerous, creates a nervous system and uh, immune system response. So that's the river. But that ground is frozen. So we've got to thaw that river and dig a new channel. So the river goes in a different direction. The river being the thought energy or the patterns. Yeah. So you dig that new pathway and the water goes on this new pathway and you're getting better and you think, yeah, I've done it. But guess what? Those old riverbeds are still there. And so if it rains again, if you're not, if you're not constantly digging the new channel, the water will eventually go back down the left-hand channel again. And so we have to consistently, repeatedly dig the right-hand right. channel right. and then fill the old channel with soil and allow grass to grow on it so that the water can no longer go on the left-hand path. Mm. And that takes patience, repetition, mm -hmm. persistence to keep doing that mm -hmm. and the motivation to do that. And mm. that's why we try to make it fun. So we do fun webinars. We sing together at the end of webinars. We do karaoke. You know, we, uh, we have laughter workshops. We nice. use puppets, lots of puppets in our uh, parts work. So we do a lot of parts work uh, as mm -hmm. well. So all of these different things and components make it lighthearted yeah. and fun and engaging. So it's entertaining, mm -hmm. not just therapeutic in that sense. Excellent. Yeah. I always say if I'm not having fun, they're not either. So how can I make this more fun? Right. Mm -hmm. Because we are definitely reward driven human beings and we like fun. If it's fun, we'll do it. That's why Netflix and phones and social media are so popular because it feels fun, mm -hmm. right? So I love that. And what a beautiful analogy, that river of neuroplasticity and retraining your brain, re rewiring your brain. You know, I, I, I often joke like, well, here's my after picture. It's like just a video of my day doing all the things that I learned, you know, what? but we there's this mentality humans have of like, it's kind of this Western meta approach of like, I'm going to just like do these things temporarily to like fix myself, whether it's weight loss or healing something. It's like, I'm just temporarily going to do those things and then I'm going to be better. And then I don't have to do them anymore. Right. And it's like, well, no, the way I look at it is like, you are learning what your life is going to look like to be where you want to be. You know, like I didn't meditate and then just like stop meditating. I didn't start working out and like get my health where I wanted it and then stop working out. I didn't start eating healthy and then got to where I wanted to be and then stop eating healthy. Right. Like yeah. it's yeah. like you're learning what your life is going to look like in order to be in a better place. Now, granted, you it might, it's going to feel more intense and it may be a little more intense and you may glide into a little less intense version of it. But I love what you're saying there is like, it's where this is the new place you are. This is the new river. This is the new way you're going to go. We're not doing, you know, just jumping over here and swimming mm. in this little pool and then going back into that same place, right? We're, we're building a new path here, right? And when you look at it like that and you start to see like, wow, there's not like sharks and crabs and horrible things in this side, like you kind of want to keep going. I'm, there's not sharks and rivers, but you guys get what I mean. You know what I mean? Like you start to get a taste of like, wow, this feels nicer. Okay. Let me keep going that way. But mm -hmm. with the understanding of like, I'm not ever trying to go back to that toxic sludge river with that apparently has sharks in it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think that's because we live in a society where we've been brought up with a sickness industry which is, mm -hmm. let's yep. not do anything preventative. Something goes wrong, we take a pill and it's fixed and we go back to our normal lives. Whereas a wellness industry is, we are in charge of our own health. We are responsible for that. 80 to 90% of our future health is based on a lifestyle. It's not based on our genetics. Oh. And therefore, what are we going to do to take responsibility for that and have good habits uh, into place in our lives? And that's where community becomes so important because when we're on our own, it's we're far less likely to indulge in 
good behaviors. But if we've got a friend who's going to the gym, uh, a friend we can meditate together, or as a family, we, we do certain activities, those are going to have longevity because the community healing aspect is absolutely key, we find. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think that is really the secret to unlocking uh, that longevity with these types of approaches. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, well done. <laughs> Thank you for bringing this to the world and then like adding research, you know, like it's so appreciated from all of us in this realm of true health, true thriving health. Like we need more of that. So just encouraging any of you that that speaks to, to kind of help out in this realm, because we could use some more of that because we're obviously going against big pharma, big food, like it's, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so we need all the help that we can get. And thank you for putting, you know, the work in to, to actually do that and, and creating this. I have no doubt that your program is a gift to anyone who has done it. Um, and thank you for, you know, going the extra miles, like, no, we're going to have daily sessions. What do we, what is needed? We're going to do that, you know? So it's awesome. It's awesome work. And thank you for coming and sharing with us today. Uh, yeah, we will link so up. Much. Yeah, we'll link up guptaprograms.com. If you're listening audibly, just go to guptaprograms.com. And are you guys on social media, I'm assuming, as well? That's right, yeah. So we're on Instagram, Facebook, etc. Okay. The handle is just guptaprogram. And, of course, you can download the, free, the app for free. So there's a 28-day free trial. So people can go to App Store or Play Store, type in Gupta Program Brain Retraining, and then you can download the free app. And there's loads of free videos and audios that people can engage in. So lots of free resources as well. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure as well.